Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 23 for Wednesday, November 26th, 2014. Apps for Wear. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Let's talk a little bit about wearables. I have my Moto 360 right here, specifically the world of smartwatches like I have. Uh, something that will, I will admit, you know, months ago, I was pretty doubtful about it uh, when it seemed like everyone around me was getting super excited about this category. I had my doubts. I, I wore a watch as a kid. But hadn't worn one for many, many years before I was given a Samsung Gear Live at this year's Google I.O. conference. I saw the potential, but that particular device didn't last very long, thanks to, in my opinion and my experience, pretty poor build quality. Then a few months later, I got this watch, the Moto 360. Sorry, get it around the microphone. Arguably one of the most stylish, stylish uh, Android watches right now. I still had reservations about what it would mean to wear a smartwatch daily. Why is it useful? What can my watch do that my phone doesn't already do? Thankfully, I've quickly realized that a smartwatch isn't about doing all the things a phone can do, but rather augmenting the technology experience. Sometimes it's providing information that passes the this is super important and I need to know it right now test. Things like text messages, important emails, weather alerts. Other times it's simply about having some fun in a brand new way, which I'll show in at least one of the apps in today's show. Today I'm featuring a few apps tailor-made for Android Wear, not simply apps that have Wear compatibility. Uh, it's definitely a distinction there. So let's take a closer look at a roundup of apps for your Android Wear device. All right, first up in my short list of Android Wear standouts is one you've probably heard of before if you have a Wear device, because launching apps on Android Wear isn't the easiest thing in the world. First, you have to bring up the voice action prompt, you scroll down the list, you tap start, then find the app you wish to launch from there. Instead, install on your phone the Wear Mini Launcher app and run it from the phone. There you'll be advised that the launcher is active on your watch. On my Moto 360, when I want to launch an app, I make sure the screen is awake, then I swipe from the left side, revealing an app tray with all my apps listed there. Swipe from the left once more, and I'm given instant access to a number of settings, including the screen brightness on my watch and a number of toggles that control your phone, like disabling Wi-Fi or muting your ringer. And the Wear Mini Launcher app on your synced phone gives you a number of style and functionality customizations as well. Wear Mini Launcher is free in the Play Store. Next up is a way to get a bit more weather info than you're accustomed to seeing by default on Wear. Not saying that the four-day forecast isn't helpful, but true weather fans want more. Eris Weather gives you just a little bit more by offering up a more detailed look at the breakdown of weather patterns throughout the current day given in three-hour chunks. You also get an additional day's worth of forecast and satellite imagery to track those nasty formations. Now, once installed and running, it'll surface weather updates on your Wear feed, so you'll want to deactivate Google's weather card if you choose Eris as your weather notification of choice. It's great to change things up a bit. And this is Eris Wear Weather, spelled A-E-R-I-S, and it can be found for free in the Play Store. Next, in many ways, a wearable device like your Android Wear watch isn't that useful if it's not tied to your phone. So if you leave without your phone on your person, that watch becomes a time-telling device and that's about it. Oh, the horror. Wear Aware is here to save the day. Wear Aware will notify you the minute your phone's connection with your watch is broken. If you walk out of the house, the phone can't communicate with your watch anymore, your watch will begin to buzz incessantly, telling you to rush back in and grab that prized possession. You can set up different alert options in the app on your phone. Wear Aware also helps you locate your phone if you have no idea where you left it. The phone finder option is activated when you say, 
Okay, Google, start phone finder. The phone will begin to ring given it's close enough to the watch to be connected and you can get on to the important stuff using the phone. Where Aware is free in the Play Store with the option to donate to the developers inside the app. Okay, this next one is just plain fun. Very little utility unless you consider a spectacular light show to be a utility. Advanced Wear Visualization uses the microphone on your watch to detect ambient sound around you and then displays a visualization around that sound. Listening to music, just plain talking, doesn't matter. It's fancy little light show will respond and react in vibrant and colorful ways. There are 36 different visualizations to pick from, from audio waveforms to floating dots to VU meters and starscapes. Kind of reminds me of those shirts that light up when you're close to strong Wi-Fi signals. Not that I've ever worn one of those shirts, <clears throat> but this is almost as geeky and fun too. Make a statement with your watch by installing advanced wear visualization for $1.49 in the Play Store. Finally, with all of these Android Wear apps installed on your phone, syncing with your watch, it can be difficult to know for sure what's compatible and what's not. Wear App Manager makes it easy to do on your phone. You just run the app and get a clear view of any apps installed on your phone that have Android Wear compatibility. You also get this nice readout at the bottom that tells you how much onboard storage remains on your watch. Now tap into an app and you get a bunch of info about that app, version of both the app on the phone as well as on the watch, the storage used by the app, permissions, uninstall option, launching the app. Basically, this is all the info that you'll see if you dive into your phone's settings and poke around the application settings there. So this isn't new information, but making it easy to access your Wear apps in one place is what this is all about. So if you want to manage the Wear apps on your device, check out Wear App Manager in the Play Store. So those are just a few Android Wear apps that caught my eye. Uh, the category obviously still in its infancy right now. I totally expect development to really take off this next year, particularly, love it or hate it, once Apple releases its Apple Watch, because you know what? Competition is good for innovation. So I've definitely missed some uh, in this roundup and will need your help catching any new and awesome Wear apps, particularly Wear apps that do interesting things that make life easier, if not just more enjoyable. Uh, please hook me up with those recommendations. You can email me at arena at twit.tv and I'll include your suggestions in a follow-up Android Wear episode of this show. I plan on doing a bunch of these as uh, time goes on. Okay, up next is a game by a mobile gaming outfit that you've undoubtedly heard of at this point, probably a little too much. And I think anymore, I hear their name and I roll my eyes because I think I know what to expect. But this time, I gotta say, they surprised me pleasantly. Uh, this game is in this week's Hot to Trot. This week, I'm taking a look at a new game by mobile gaming superstars Rovio, who brought you, whether you like it or not, the Angry Birds franchise. I've gotten so used to Angry Birds spinoffs that I was wondering if we'd see something outside that universe from Rovio, and here it is. The game is called Retry, and you'll need some patience to really get the controls down because it's a challenge, to say the least. You're the pilot of an out-of-control airplane. You start each level with the plane grounded on its runway, and you must successfully fly the plane over to the target runway on the other side. This is done by simply tapping and holding on the screen, which, as you hold longer, propels your plane upwards. If you hold too long, you'll end up doing a flip, which could be exactly what you need to do in some cases. For me, it just meant I was likely to crash. If you tap with a little less duration, you can find a nice rhythm that keeps the plane in the air, going straight more or less, and hopefully, eventually, that will lead you to the landing pad on the other side of the play field. The terrain that surrounds you is your biggest enemy. Run into any of it, and you'll understand why the game is called Retry. In fact, the clouds aren't even friendly, so don't fly into those unless you want to retry yet again. There are coins littered throughout the levels, and if you're tempted to grab them, you put your success at risk. Hope that coin was worth it. The coins actually allow you to save your progress in a level when spent at a checkpoint. 
And if you search hard enough, you'll find silver nuts that will give you special powers like slowing down time and taking a hit without dying. The game has been compared to Flappy Birds, and while it's not really the same thing, the gameplay mechanics are certainly similar in that it takes quite a while to get a grip on the precise timing that's required to fly the plane without crashing. So if that sounds frustrating, you need not install. But like Flappy Birds, the game's retro pixelated environment and chiptune soundtrack brings a cute factor that helps to wash away the agony. Check out Retry for free with non-intrusive in-app purchases in the Play Store. The more I play Retry, the better it gets. Big time props to Rovio for breaking themselves from the Angry Birds mold and trying something new. Uh, the only thing I can hope at this point is that they continue to do this kind of thing so that we don't have to see a bunch of rehashes of Angry Birds uh, going forward. Hey, I love hearing from you guys. Do I say that enough? Your recommendations are super helpful to me, so please Send your favorite apps, your new category ideas, whatever you got to arena at twit.tv. It really helps me out. There's also a subreddit that we have for the show where I post categories and ask you to tell me which are your favorite apps within those categories and why. I actually just posted a few today, uh, one on RSS readers. I plan on doing a follow-up, an upcoming show on RSS readers and another on cord cutting. So if you have ideas for great apps in those categories, or you want to see what other categories are there to help me out for future episodes, head on over to AndroidAppArena.reddit. Dot com and share them with me. It's a really big help. Uh, you can also follow me on Google Plus for my random and sometimes app-related ramblings and plus Jason Howell there. I host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show, really anything Android. That happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course... If you miss live taping, which a lot of people don't make it live, that's okay. Each week's episode will appear later that night on the site and in the feeds. All those details can always be found at the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. <laughs>